Chapter 5, Lesson 10, Variables and Alice. Before we start today's program, let's review from your lesson yesterday, where you learned about variables. Remember, a variable is a named memory location that stores a value. It has to have a unique name. It has to be different from procedures and other keywords. And the value of the variable can change during program execution. So remember, a variable is like a container. It stores a specific type of data, and you can't mix them. So if you declare a variable as an integer, then it has to store only integers. If you declare it as decimals, then it has to store decimals. If it's a string, it has to be strings. So once you declare a variable with a specific type, it can only be that type of data. To declare a variable, you're going to give it a name, assign it a data type, and give it an initial value. Let's go over those steps. For your variable declaration, you're going to use the variable tile that you find at the bottom of the screen in Alice. When you click on it, or when you drag it up into your program, you're going to get this dialog box. And here from the dialog box, this is where you're going to assign it a name, pick the data type, and give it an initial value. Now let's start our program. We're going to get into Alice and open the Chapter 5, Lesson 10, Bunny with Variables program from the backpack. Remember to add your name and date in the comment block. And save this program in your student account. You will notice that two procedures have already been done for you, jump and spin. We're going to be using these in our program with our variables. You're going to add several variables to the program. We're going to use the variables and procedure calls in Alice statements and then change the values of the variables two different ways. We're going to use random numbers and we're going to ask the user for a value. When you're finished with everything, save the program and put it in the backpack for a grade. Okay, let's get into Alice and get started. So we're here in Alice. We've opened up the program Bunny with Variables, which is our Lesson 10 program. And it's just got one bunny here and it's also got two procedures that have already been done for you. One is for jumping. You can see that we use a parameter for how many and a parameter for how high. And we've got a spin, which also has a parameter for how many. We're going to be using these throughout the program. What we're going to do is actually practice declaring variables and changing their values. Now this is going to kind of give us two sections. So we're going to add a comment. And this is going to be the variable section of our code. And then we're going to have another comment that's going to be the programming part. We're just going to kind of divide them up so it'll be easy to find the variables. You don't have to do it in this order, but this is a good way to organize your work and to help you find things when you need them. If we have variables scattered throughout the program, then it kind of defeats the purpose of having them in one place where you can change the values easily. So we're going to have two sections. We're going to start by creating a variable for some words to do a greeting. So let's come over here to variable. We're looking at the bottom of our screen here where the different structures are. You see variable and assign. You must start with variable to declare it, and then after you declare the variable, you can use assign to change the value. So let's start with variable. We're going to drag it up into our variable section, and we have to make all of our choices here. So it is a variable. And this one is going to be a greeting, so it is a text string. And I have to give it some kind of a unique name, and make sure that it's different from your procedure name. So I can't use jump or spin or biped or any of these that are already used. I'm just going to call it greeting. I am going to use lowercase, which is our convention for all of our names. And then I'm going to pick an initial value for greeting, and it can just be hi. A very simple greeting. When I click on OK, I have just created a variable. We've created our variable. It's a text string, and the value, the name of the variable is greeting, and the initial value is high. Now we're going to use this variable in a command. So I'm going to click on my bunny, and what I want him to do is say something. So I'm going to drag up the say tile, and normally I would come here to custom text string and I would type what I want him to say. This time I'm just going to pick my variable. Notice that it shows right here. And it's going to take the value of greeting, which is high, and it's going to say this. Let's go ahead and run the program. 
you see that he said hi. Now if I change the value of this, I can change the initial value to something else. I can do hi plus, like maybe I want to do hello plus a custom string there. Now when I run the program, I didn't have to change it down here. I just changed it one place. Now it's actually going to say hi, hi there. So it'll be interesting. There we go. So you created a variable and you used the variable in a statement. Let's create another variable. This time we're going to use jump. And remember jump had two things here, how many and how high. So I'm going to create a variable for how many and I'm going to create a variable for how high. I'm not going to call them these two. These are my parameters. And the variable is going to have a value that gets passed in as my argument. So I want to keep my parameter name separate from my variable names. So I'm going to not call it how many or how high. That's actually the question. I'm going to kind of answer it. Let's come back to my first method. I'm going to create a variable. So you'll use your variable tile. I'm going to come into my variable section. Okay. Now, I'm going to do it first for the number of jumps. So my name is going to be num, for short for number, jumps. Now you can spell out the whole word number if you want to. And the number of jumps is always going to be a whole number because I can't do half a jump or one and three quarters. I can only do whole number of jumps. So I'm going to select whole number here. And my initial value will be one. So I must do one jump. I just created another variable. I'm going to create one for how high. So I'm going to use the variable tile. Let's come up here. Now how high can be a decimal number? Because I can do 1.5, 3.25. It doesn't have to be a whole number with how high I jump. So I'm going to select decimal number and I'm going to call it um, distance. Or maybe let's call it height. So it's kind of like the answer to the question. So how high will I jump? I will jump height. And let's add an initial value as 1. I just created two more variables. They're up here in my variable section, so they're really easy to find if I want to change the initial value. Let's use these two variables in a call. So I'm going to call jump. I'm going to click on my bunny again. And all my programming, my statements are going to come here in the programming section. And here is jump. It's asking me the questions, how high, and instead of picking a number, I'm going to come to my variable. And now it's asking how many, and instead of picking a number, I'm going to come to my variable. So I've just used these two variables as the answer to my question, and I've used them in a call. Let's see how this works. Okay, so it did one jump, and it did it one high. Now this will be a little bit more interesting if I change up the numbers. If I just keep the initial value every time, it's just kind of a ho hum, I know it's going to happen. So I can change the value of my variable after I declare it by using the assign statement. So let's drag this up here. I'm going to put it in between. So I want to change the value before I jump. The one I'm going to change first is the number of jumps. So I'm just going to pick a number. I have to have a placeholder here, and then I can change it. So really, I think what would make this interesting is if we ask the user, how many times should the bunny jump? There's a function for that. So I'm going to click on the Functions tab. Notice that I still have the bunny selected. I'm going to click on the Functions tab, and I'm just going to scroll down to right here where it says Prompt User. And here's the different things I can ask the user. Okay, well, we know that the number of jumps is a whole number. And a whole number is an integer. So even though it doesn't say whole number here, this is the prompt that I'm going to use. I'm just going to drag it. And you can see that there's a couple of places that lets me do it. But I'm going to put it right here in my assign statement. And now I can ask the message. So my message is going to be how many jumps. Or something like that. So you're going to ask the question. And it will prompt you to enter a number. And we're going to change the value of num jumps to what the person asks. So let's run this program again. You see how it stops and it's going to ask me how many jumps. Well, let's put in two. We do two jumps. Let's play it again. 
It's going to ask me how many jumps. Let's say five. Okay, so you see how I can change the value of the variable as the program is running, and that's pretty cool. Now let's change the other value. We've got height, and I want to change its value as well. So I could do the same thing and ask the user how high should they jump. Let's try something that we saw from our online tutorial. Let's try using a random number. So I'm going to drag up the assign again. I'm going to put it right under this one. I'm just going to pick any number. That's my placeholder. Now I'm going to change this to random number. So you see choice right there. So this is a real number, and I can pick it from 0 to 1, or I can select my own numbers. Going up 0 height is not very interesting, so I'm going to pick 0.25 as my lowest. And I'm going to go maybe up to 10. That's pretty high. So now I can change this to a custom decimal number, and maybe say 5.0. So I can go anywhere from 0.25 to 5.0. That's a pretty big range. Let's try running this program again. There's my greeting. How many jumps? Let's say 3. And it's going to pick a random number for how high. That was pretty high. Let's run it again. I'm going to pick three. And this time, you can see the random number was smaller. Let's try it again. Okay, so every time I run it, he's going to be doing a different height. And I didn't have to ask. I just let the computer choose a random number. So we've got a variable that's a text for greeting. We've got a whole number for number of jumps. We've got a decimal number for height. So we're using three variables. This one just uses the variable. I've got two that change, and I've got another one that uses the variables. Now we've also got a procedure here for spin. And spin is going to be how many times do we want it to spin. So let's use a variable for that. I'm going to drag up my variable tile into my variable section, and I'm going to call this spins. This is kind of like the example in the tutorial where they had the bunny spinning. Can I spin a decimal part? Well, I probably can do partial of a spin. So it's up to you. Do you want to choose a decimal number, or do you want him to spin all the way every time? I'm going to choose a whole number because I just want the bunny to always be facing forward, but you could use a decimal number for number of spins. And my initial value will be 1, so it must do one spin. I've declared the variable. Now I want to use it. I'm going to click on my bunny and go to procedures. I see spin right here. I'm going to drag it over. And instead of picking a number, I'm going to come to my variables. And here spins. So it's going to take one spin. It's going to use that value right here. And it's going to spin once. Let's do two jumps. It's got a random number for height. and then it did one spin. Well, I can ask the user how many spins, just like I asked how many jumps. So let's give that a try. I'm going to come to my assign tile. I'm going to come up here just before I spin. It's not going to do me any good to change the value after I use spin. So I'm going to ask before I spin, pick any number. That's my placeholder. Now I'm going to go to my functions. I'm going to find my prompt. And once again, this is an integer. Put it right there. My custom string is how many spins. So I'll get an, an, a number from the user here, a random number, and a number from the user again. So let's try this. Let's do two jumps. There's a random number. Let's do five spins. There we go. So we have a lot of flexibility in this program where the user is going to give us information and we're going to use it in our code. Now let's try adding some variables that we can use in some different ways. These variables we've used in our procedure calls and we're going to create some more variables that we can just use with our Alice statements. So let's create a variable that will actually use the paint color. So it's going to be a little bit different from the numbers and from the text string that we've used already. We're going to drag up our variable into our variable section. And let's give it a name called um, new color. Now the data type of this is not a number or a text string. It's an other type. So let's come over here and you'll see that paint and color are some other types. Let's use paint. 
And for my initial color, I can pick white or any of the colors. The bunny is white. So I can just assign that as my initial color. But I do want to change the value of paint before I actually do it because the bunny is already white. So I've declared the variable here. And I can change the initial value, but let's just do it in our code so we can practice doing that. I'm going to use the assign tile. I'm going to drag it right up here, and the variable I'm going to change is new color. So what do I want the new color to be? Well, you can pick anything. I'm going to pick red because it'll really stand out, but you can pick whatever color you want. In our next program, in program 11, we're going to learn how to do a random color. Right now we're just going to set it, and then we'll learn how to use it. I've got my new color here. Let's use this in a statement. So I'm going to come over here to my bunny and to my procedures. If I scroll down, I can see that there's a set paint option with paint as an argument. Let's drag this up here, and I can pick a color, or if you see here, if I keep scrolling down, new color is my variable. Let's go ahead and select it. So I'm using my variable in my statement. Okay, let's run this program. I'm going to go through all the other things. So let's do two jumps. Let's do two spins. And now it's changing color. And I can get it to change back if I want to. I can actually just do another set paint color, or I can use another variable. So let's drag up a variable. And I'm going to call it old color. So we have new color. Let's call this one old color. And I'm going to select paint again. And I'm going to make it white. I'm not going to change the value of this variable. I'm going to keep it white. So after I set the paint color to new color, I can set the paint color again back to old color. So when I run this, I'll do two jumps. I'll do two spins. And there's red. And then back to its old color. Okay, I want to practice with our decimal numbers just a little bit more. So we're going to do one about resizing. And when I resize, I can do it from small fractions all the way up to pretty big numbers. And they can be decimal. So let's add another variable in our variable section. And we're going to call this one change size. And this one is going to be a decimal number. And I'm just going to pick 1.0 for the initial value. So I've got another variable now for the size. For my bunny, I'm going to use resize right here. And instead of picking a number, I'm going to use my variable change size. I want to ask the user what, how big should the bunny get. So I'm going to use my assign tile. I'm going to put it right before I call change size. Change size is right here. I'm just going to pick any number as my placeholder. And then I can use the function for the prompt. Now you don't see decimal here anywhere. You see Boolean, string, double, and integer. Well, a double is a decimal. It's just another funny way of saying it. So I'm going to use the double. And notice that it's going to let me do it right here, where the 0.5 is. And now I'm going to do my custom string. So I'm going to ask the question, how big should I get? But you might want to go even further in your prompt and give this some values. So anywhere from 0.2, if he wants to get really small, to how big should he get? Maybe 3.5. So I'm going to kind of prompt them about the number that I'm looking for right here. So I'm getting another number from the user for the size. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's do three jumps. Let's do one spin. I'm going to change colors. Now it's going to ask me how big should I get. So if I put 0.2, you should get small. Now maybe I want to ask this again so it has a chance of getting bigger. Or I could pick a random number and have it resize again. So let's do one more of these. I change the size by getting a number from the user. Let's change the size one more time by getting a random number. So once again, I'm going to just pick any number as my placeholder. And then I can change it to a random number. And then you can kind of choose. I'm going to start with 0 to 1. But I really don't want it to be 0, .0. Hopefully it won't be because then it would kind of disappear. So let's change this to a custom decimal number, maybe 0.125. And then the biggest I wanted before was 3.5. So let's do that. So we'll pick a random number in one here. And then let's change the size again. 
So here's my resize. And instead of picking a number, I come to my variable, change size. This is going to be our program. Let's run it and see that everything works perfectly. There's my greeting. Here's how many jumps. The random height. How many spins. Change color. It's going to ask me how to resize. So let's say uh, 1.5. And then it's going to resize on its own. And it got it. Okay. Now you can end this program any way you want. Maybe you want to, to um, have the bunny say something. You can change these variables. So you can keep going. You can add more to this code if you'd like. If you have time, you try some of your own variables. And when you're finished and you've tested your program, you're ready to save it and turn it in for a grade.